One of the major discrepancies when people think about some of our lives as Verdi singers or as famous one character or another is that you might that you were doing that all along. Sometimes it's very hard for me to explain to my own students that I started out singing Lida. I sang a lot of oratorio. I, you know, I made money on the holidays singing the B minor mass and, and the Messiah and, and the Johannes Passion and, and various Bach cantatas long before I touched Aida. As a matter of fact, my voice teacher said, when I said I wanted to, I was asked to sing Aida, she said, over my dead body, which of course I considered. <laughs> but uh, she was right, that was not the time for Aida. It was just at a ti that time when I walked in, I probably looked like Aida to them and they said, well, okay, what about Aida? Aida or Porgy, whichever one. And um, they, what they don't realize is there were years and years of recitals, years and years of Schubert songs, of uh, Spanish songs, of French songs, which was, was, were not good. My husband still says, are you sure you were singing French? But <laughs> He's particularly nasty about that. But uh, the point is, it didn't. you don't start out as Aida. You don't start out as a Verdi Requiem uh, soprano. You don't necessarily start. So many of us had been singing a few years before the public called us famous or popular or whatever. And it's so hard to say that to the young people because when I say that to them, I remember judging the Miss America contest. Um, one of the girls d did something and I said, you know, you, you, you're mixing up your repertoire here. I wouldn't be sure by looking at this whether you're a mezzo or a soprano. You know, are you sure you want to do both of them together, opera and, or whatever it was. And she said, well, you did it. I heard you sing and such and such and you sang, but she didn't know how I got there. She didn't know why I did it or whatever it was. And I don't remember specifically, only as she was, it was Miss Iceland, I think. And she said, well, you did it. Or was it Miss Alaska? Not Miss Iceland, it was Miss Alaska. Miss Alaska, it had to be the Miss America. And she didn't say it in a nasty way. Uh, it's just the misinterpretation that the young people will have sometimes when they meet you at the, in the middle of your life and not at the beginning, <laughs> and hopefully not at the end. Um, and th th I found myself thinking, you know, she's absolutely right. This is how she knows me as the public. Uh, when I say to my students, uh, one young man with a beautiful voice from South Africa came up and he sang Il Lacerato Spirito at 22 years old. And I have to tell you, it was beautiful. His voice, his voice was beautiful. So it was beautiful. And I looked at him and I said, Do you, did you enjoy doing that as much as I enjoyed hearing it? Oh, yes, ma'am. He said, I said, good, I'll put it away because you won't sing that for another five years. I've got some Handel songs. And he was so upset. The voice teacher is an extremely important part of your life. That is the guy. That's the mentor. That's the one who says, watch that. Don't do this. Let's do that. And you, that teacher must then give you a reason for doing it. That teacher must then convince you that you're doing it not only because he or she thinks it's right, but because you must know that it's right. And she also, my teacher gave me a great love for Lita. I, I found singing songs like singing, each one of them was its own little mini opera, because she, sa she said, the opera might be the big picture, and you have on costumes, and you have other people there, but in a song there's just you, the pianist, and the composer. And I still want to see the picture. I want to see the picture with all the colors. And I never forgot that. I, I, I live with that all the time, and I try to pass it on to my own students. Sometimes it's easier than other times. But uh, the, the whole idea of going through, it doesn't mean that I was the best Bach singer in the world, but it was important that I knew how to sing Bach. It doesn't mean that, the, that I could have sung everything of Bach. It meant that, it, again, choices have, that's a very important word, choice. And going, getting into the opera and find, realizing that I, I, I love opera, singing opera very, very much, but I don't discount, even in the school that I'm, I'm starting, even though we're starting out with learning complete roles and the importance of learning a complete role and knowing the language, uh, uh, languages, the, and we have other things that I'd like to tell you about, but 
I hope one day to also have a song section to show the, you know, to tie them together, to, to make that little picture the big picture, then go back to the little picture, but always because there are these colors. Uh, but we can't do it all at once, so we're starting with the opera. And uh, we'll also have stage um, mo movement, you know, uh, regular stage classes, and combat uh, scenes, how to approach another person on, uh, at, in a fight or in an embrace. I, I, nothing bothers me more than when I see people singing as lovers, and one first turns to the audience, and then he turns the other one, and she sings to the audience, and then they turn back, and the other one sings. They don't know how to con make contact. Or it's supposed to be a fight scene, and they look like I can't. Sometimes it's it's funny, and it's not their fault. I remember um, when I thought, well, let's let's have some combat, uh, and the answer was, well, the girls are not going to do combat. You know, it's not whether you're going to do it; it's do you know how to do it? Do you know when you see it that whether or not it's been done well? It's not only that you're the performer; you're also the audience at some point. And you want to appreciate and know that what you're seeing is, it can be appreciated because you know what, what, you, what it should be. Your body posture, your body, your breathing within that body posture. My goodness, if somebody had told me these things at the beginning of my career, I don't know, I might have been a good singer with a little help. But I'm not, I'm not saying that to be funny. You stop and say, look, you did have a career. You did make loads and loads of recordings. You sung with the best of them. Uh, what are you complaining about? It's not a complaint. It's just that having had that, I just think what a young person could have if they got some of the things that I learned early on in their life rather than at the end of their careers. That's all. It's not a complaint. Um, that when I look at the young people now that, I mean, style influences things. When I was a young girl, the ladies of even the movies dressed differently. There was an, a different type of elegance. What was called elegant were ladies in um, well-cut dresses. There was a, there was a look of, of uh, or when, I, when I think of Rosalind Russell or, 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 of, or uh, any of the ladies of that of, of the 40s and 50s, not that I was born yet, but if I had known, you know, I saw the old movies on the TV. Uh, but the, the, the ladies of the, those periods, now the look is looser. It's without the garments that the people of, the, of earlier time used to wear. It's, um, it's freer, which is great. That has, that, that's, that's wonderful. But the young people consider themselves well-dressed sometimes when what I would call appalling outfits. Now, do we as young opera singers go in saying, what's up, man? Or do we go in uh, carrying on what our uh, profession calls elegant? I don't knock the young people for what they wear. On the contrary, I, I love them. But if they're going to come, they can't come into butterfly re a butterfly rehearsal like that, you know, and sneakers and the hat turned around, you know. It, it, there's, there has to be a marriage of what is today and what is important to be stylish in your own, in your peer group, and yet and still, if you're going to be an artist, know what's re uh, to know what's required within that profession, so that you can ride both both sides even uh, well, and be accept accepted and 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 understand the differences rather than fight them. When I, uh, in my classes at the university, when I say to the kids, you can't come to class in sneakers, not because I don't like their sneakers, ugly as some of them are, but because you carry yourself differently in a pair of sneakers than you do with a, even a very small heel. You, you stand differently, you walk differently. Uh, and some of them, the moment they realize that, I don't have to say it twice. Or when I tell them the, mean, the importance of knowing every word, the meaning of every word, one young lady said to me, you know, Ms. Arroyo, when you first told me that I hated you, and I mean, she said it with real feeling. She hated me. <laughs> and she says, now I can't do anything without knowing what I'm saying. So, and if one or two people get through, you find yourself feeling good about it because you know you don't reach 100%. So that's all of this is, you know, it's interesting. It's, it's what keeps me interested in what, it's what keeps, I hope, other artists interested in who's coming, who's yet to come, because they need us. And we need them too. <laughs>